Guys, let's talk about some of the mistakes that people make when they are purchasing property, right? There's still a lot of continuous mistakes. And if you look at all of the mistakes that are being done in this day and age, it's the same mistakes that people did or made 10 years ago, etc. So it seems as though it's repetitive mistakes. So let's educate each other about those particular mistakes. All right. So by introduction, my name is Yolanda Mnyengeza. I'm an attorney and a director here at Mnyengeza Attorneys, which is a law firm based in South Africa, Johannesburg, right? To the folks that are new here, welcome. We're happy to see you. And to those that are coming here for the second or the third or the fifth time, thank you for coming back. Let's get to the content. So what is the first mistake a lot of people love to make? Oh, this one. It is people exchanging money and a title deed. So what normally will happen is that the, the, the buyer and the seller will just meet up, have a discussion, then agree, and then the buyer will then give the seller money, and then the seller will just give the buyer a title deed. And people often think this is the correct way of purchasing property. This is the worst way in which you can prop, uh, uh, purchase a property because it is not even lawful in actual fact, and the uh, seller can come back and claim that property. So this is definitely the biggest mistake you can make. You will lose money if you transact in purchasing an immovable property this way. There's a reason why it is said you always must involve an attorney when you're going to do this. But as we see in this day and age, people still do the same thing. They want to have these transactions on their own. If you do, just be mindful. This is not a lawful transaction. Listen, on this note, in fact, on this issue, if I have a title deed, I own a property and I say I've lost the first title deed i can easily make another title deed disqualifying the already in existence title deed so a lot of these people holding on to those title deeds are actually holding on to title deeds that was disqualified years ago and in actual fact it's a matter of time before you get someone who's going to knock and say i want to take occupation of my property or you find people who are inheriting that property saying we are here to take it over so this is the first mistake you don't want to do or don't want to make when it comes to purchasing a property let's talk about the second mistake second mistake a lot of people make also this one is quite prevalent in our society and that is when a seller is selling a property you'll find that when they get a, a potential buyer they go to the police station the seller then signs an affidavit and then gives it to the buyer and then they take the cash and then that's the end of the transaction Again, this is one of the worst mistakes you can make because this is not how properties are purchased, right? In terms of South African law, when you're going to alienate property, anything that has to do with buying and selling a property has to be written down in a contract. An affidavit is just someone attesting to something under oath. And it, it does not meet the requirements that are stipulated in the Land Alienation Act which states that this must be on a contract which contains specific terms and conditions. So that is why this is not lawful. And that affidavit often isn't useful. Ask the people that are sitting with those affidavits. They're sitting with those affidavits for years. They can't get those properties transferred. And the seller is either no longer wanting to assist with the transfer or else the seller, people can't get hold of, right? They disappeared from the face of the earth. So be mindful. This is the biggest mistake that you can make. An affidavit is something totally different. A contract is something totally different. Let's go to the third mistake. Mistake number three. People buying a property that doesn't have a title deed, that they, they can't confirm the owner of that property. How, how are you buying a property from someone who you don't even know is the rightful owner of that property? who has a property they say they own, which is non-registered, which doesn't even have a title deed, and you're buying such a property, biggest mistake you can make. Because what if it turns out they are not actually the rightful owners of that property? What if a lot of things? When you're going to buy a property, you need to know that they hold title to it. Then that gives them the permission to sell. Do you get what I'm saying? So you... Making such a buy is the biggest mistake you can make and you must just know this is an informal buy and this is a lot of uh, People actually do this, but uh, just note 
uh, it's going to not necessarily be a lawful bar because number one, you're not even certain if that person that sold that property to you is actually the rightful owner of that property. And number two, there's even nothing to confirm ownership here. This might actually be a property that belongs to somebody else totally, right? So that's the biggest mistake you don't want to make. Rather, a certain an owner of that particular property, know who holds title to that land, to that property, then you can determine whether or not you should be transacting with it. Otherwise, this is just one of the biggest mistakes that people often make. And others often complain at a later stage and say, we were kicked out, right? After purchasing a property from some said developer or rather purchasing land from some said uh, developer, only to find out these were fake. There's someone who actually owns the whole lot, you know, that was sold individually. So just be mindful of those things. Always ascertain who the owner is. What's the fourth mistake that a lot of people make? Let's talk about the fourth mistake that people often make. The fourth mistake, also this one is a popular one, right? It's a popular one when people are purchasing uh, 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 auctioned properties. It's a popular one when, when people are purchasing properties that they believe are being sold at a much lower uh, amount. There, there's always a catch, guys. Always. You just need to find it. Um, I had a discussion with some clients last week and we were discussing something similar to this. There was some form of discount on this property sale because the properties in that area were for a certain amount. But then for this particular one, they, they, there was, you know, obviously some form of discount. And when we assess the circumstances of that particular property, that's when we realize, in actual fact, there's no discount here. They are just making this kind of discount just so that it looks good. But if you assess everything, the overall circumstances of that property is actually going to cost you a lot, if not the value or the full value of the market price, it, it's going to actually cost you much more. Because number one, there were people who were there who had already hijacked that property. So that was going to be another issue on its own. I don't want to even mention the other ones, but that was red flag number one. And so when you're going to purchase a property, that's one of the things that you also have to look at. Don't be so excited and think it's a bargain. You have to understand what are the other things pertaining to this property here? What, what do the rates look like? Are they going to be for me or what's going to happen? Stop assuming things. That's also another big problem that people have is that they assume a lot of things. They assume that, okay, I don't have to read this contract a lot because I know the rates and taxes are not going to be for me. The next thing they see the, 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 the rates and taxes are for their account. And when they actually look at the contract, they actually agree to this. So this is one of the mistakes that people make a lot and it ends up costing them much more than they had budgeted. It's best you know exactly what the property is about, you know, how much it's going to cost you, assess it clearly. And if you don't know how to assess it, you go see your practitioner because that's when we'll be able to calculate and see and project to you, okay, this is what you can expect. Then for yourself, you can see, okay, whether or not you do afford, you know, to purchase that type of property. Because once you make this mistake and sign contracts, when you think, okay, no, 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 this is not going to be for me. After you've signed the contract, it becomes an issue because you often will be penalized for canceling that particular contract. So rather, do things in the right way, assess the circumstances before you move forward and purchase or even sign an offer to purchase. Let's go to the last mistake that I want us to talk about that people often make. And the last one, very quickly, it's people rushing to send money to a seller because they are being pressurized that, okay, time is running out, quickly send the money so that we can close the sale. Biggest scam ever. Don't do it. Do not do it because even in the first place, you're not supposed to be sending money to the seller, right? You should be going to the person that's going to be taking care of this transfer. And so if you haven't signed anything, you haven't had a proper and lengthy discussion about the terms and how this property transaction is going to work, why are you sending money to secure a property that's not even yours? Guys, be mindful. These are the most critical mistakes you don't want to make because if you do make it, you will suffer the consequences and you will lose a lot of money. This brings us to the end of our discussion today. I hope it was helpful. Very short. Unfortunately, we just wanted to get to the point so that you get educated. So we'll see you next time.
Like I said, my name is Yolanda Mnyengeza. I'm an attorney and a director at a law firm here in Johannesburg, South Africa. Let's see you next time. And before I forget, just make sure if this was educational to you, I'm sure it can be educational to another person. So what you're going to do is you like and share and even invite people to come and watch this video. We'll see you next time.